Coming up, we're heading back to Universal Orlando to try a restaurant that we really just don't want to go to, but we're doing it for you. So you better keep watching. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. <laughs> This is episode 197 of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. The Dis Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams. Today, I'm joined alongside by my co-host, Rhino Clavin. Hello. And we are going to have a fun one for you, as I said. So, uh, surprisingly, uh, yes, I am wearing a Halloween outfit. Rhino, technically. I have a pumpkin on mine. Yeah. Nope. Is that mine? Is that mine or yours? I don't know. No, mine's are all on silent. Oh, I believe that's mine then. I I apologize for that. No, you did not just get a notification. Mm. I'm just too stupid to turn off my phone. Uh, sound on my, uh, technically not on my phone, on my computer. Doesn't matter. Uh, yes, it's, uh, unfortunately, we are, we are recording this before uh, Halloween has happened, so that's why we're still in attire, but we're not actually going to be talking about Halloween on this week's episode, even, even though Horror Nights is still going on for another couple nights uh, as of when this is coming out, but we we have moved on from all of the horror mania, and we are moving on to greener pastures with that, so... You know, you're just gonna have to, you're gonna have to maybe wait until next week to see if we bring up what our favorite houses ended up being, like a final wrap up list. Because I plan, uh, you know, I plan on being there at least for the final night. So maybe we'll do that. Is the final night on Saturday or Sunday? Yes, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Okay, because Hollywood added Sunday. Yeah. yeah, they didn't add Tuesday like we added. We added Tuesday. Uh, we don't get Saturday. For the Sunday. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, once you go for Sunday, with the way Universal uh, works, there. Their weeks um, are are Sunday to Saturday, so yeah. it would go into another week of pay on the Sunday night. That makes so, sense. Yeah, yeah. With without something like a hurricane or something coming through, it, fingers crossed, knock on wood, all that stuff. Uh, without that happening, I doubt that they would ever, ever, ever try to decide to add on an extra day because that would screw up so many things. But yep, coming to an end this week is really sad. So we're going to move off on that. We're not ready to start getting in the holiday spirit. As I mentioned, I believe on last week's show, we're coming up to that too very quickly with our first press event for all the holiday stuff. And then uh, we'll, we'll continue to update you on the holiday fun. But uh, last week, uh, no, not last week, a couple weeks ago, don't even remember at this point. It's been a couple weeks. So you, of course, we did our our worst places to eat at quick service style at Universal Orlando, and we figured uh, it's it's already about time to get out there and try one of those that were on that list that we haven't done for this show yet or haven't done in a while. So uh, we have made a decision on that, but you're going to have to wait until the, we actually play it for you here for you to actually see it. But before we even get to that, I do want to mention uh, now that it is gaining full steam and hopefully soon in the future it will roll out. It's not going to have an impact on the the vlog that we're playing for you because we're choosing a restaurant that's not that. But I uh, wanted to talk about mobile, exp uh, blah, mobile express pickup for dining mm. at Universal Orlando. So in case you're confused on what I'm talking about. I'm talking about mobile ordering. You can now do that through the Universal Orlando app. This has been happening now for, gosh, maybe a month. Maybe oh, wow. maybe less than that. Maybe a couple, at least two to three weeks, it's been it's been a thing. So right now, it's only available at Mel's, Richter's Burger, and Burger Diggs. So two places that we could have used it when we did our show last week. But we were kind of, we were in that mode where we wanted to walk up check out everything so that's why i didn't do it for that but um it, but yeah definitely right now it is happening at those and um there will be more coming for sure so uh just got to be patient with it but 
Yeah, it's just, it's not anything separate, kind of like if you're familiar with using My Disney Experience, it's all going to happen right in the app, the official Universal Orlando app. And if you don't have that, you're already missing out on a great resource uh, anywhere in the parks. Uh, you can be anywhere at all, and you can find out the wait times, uh walking directions to where you want to go next it does just about everything and it's a lot cleaner than mm -hmm. my disney experience it's smoother it never crashes never has connection problems uh the only downfall to it is when the actual attractions aren't updating their wait times correctly yeah. which they're to blame for that not the app itself but otherwise this thing is it's amazing it's it has been since it launched and it just keeps getting better and better as new features are added to it and this is obviously a big one so uh, yeah if you don't have an account yet through the app you need to set up your uh, account and wallet that you can use to pay for everything with it so and now there's just going to be a drop down box that you can drop down to see for order food and drinks and so you'll do that and then it'll pop up with the restaurants where you can place that order for and then at that point you can browse the menu and check on all the items that are in there and then confirm your order and check out so and of course just like any other mobile order whether it's at Walt Disney World at Chipotle any place it does it which is essentially every restaurant now that's quick service uh, they will start making it once you have them prepare my order, prepare your order. It's always a button on there and it's going to be uh, nice and ready for you when you walk up to the mobile express pickup window. So um, like I said, it's it's now available at the places that are here during its initial launch. Um, uh, so if you're going to Mel's Drive-In, Richter's Burger, Burger Digs, maybe try it out see if you see if you can be in on the start with it so unfortunately like i said we don't get to utilize it for our little fun that we're going in but i think this is a, a great next step so as long as they they will have annual pass holder discounts and stuff mm -hmm. weaved into it um because every universal restaurant has some sort of discount yeah. like in the parks um they all have some sort of discount with an annual pass and it it's it's helpful you know it's only a dollar or two but hey, uh, that's a dollar or two you could spend on something else exactly but then it also goes into the step with it is the convenience of being able to not have to wait in a line and pick it up and all of that uh is that worth paying the extra money to just do mobile order uh with it but you know i sometimes i feel like yes universal yes. has particularly awful lines when it comes to the quick service dining i think usually every single time we go out into a quick service restaurant the first thing we complain about is the ordering process in general it always seems to be an absolute mess so anything that can make it easier to get food at universal uh, theme parks i think is greatly greatly appreciated oh for sure no question. Yeah. Yep. And it's just, it's not, I don't look at this as keeping up with uh, the park down the road. I think about this just keeping up with a convenience factor. I'm going to be more likely to spend money if it's more convenient for me. So a uh, great thing that you can utilize if you're heading out to Universal Orlando. But speaking of that, we need to get to Universal Orlando and we need to get some nummy in our tummy. So mm -hmm. let's head over there. Hello, everyone. We finally made it here to Universal Orlando, and if you are struggling to pinpoint exactly where we are, we are in Toon Lagoon. We've already eaten at one terrible restaurant in this location, so we're not going back there again. So we're at the next terrible location. And that, of course... Comic Strip Cafe. Yes, Comic Strip Cafe. Do you remember us talking about this a few weeks ago? It's a mishmash of uh, Italian, Asian, and American foods all together. So, it's not really what I'm in the mood for today. I've never eaten here. Have you eaten here? I have. And it wasn't it wasn't horrible, but it also wasn't like, oh, this is this is good. Let's come here. Yeah. Let's do that. So, we're going to see if that still stands or if it's gotten worse, gotten better, but we need to go inside to find out. So, get in. Inside here at Comic Strip Cafe, we were greeted with something that we're not used to at any 
review that we've done that at least I can't remember, uh, it is nearly empty. I will say it's not necessarily like this isn't not lunchtime. It's on the later side of it, but it's as if people don't know that this is existing or it's open, and so that's that's never a good sign right away. You know, it's, if people are excited about this place, you think that the, it would the lines would be out the door, uh, all the seating would be filled. It's not even like and they not have even six people registers <laughs> and there's only people at two. Yeah. So. You know, that obviously leads into thoughts and perceptions. This is going to be the cleanest audio we've ever had for one of these things, yeah. at least. So, uh, at least we got that going. But as I described outside, we've described in past, there's uh, multiple different options on this menu. It, it covers all extremes from Italian with pizza and pasta to American with burgers, chicken sandwiches, to uh, fish on that spectrum. And then, of course, to the Asian food, they also have some Chinese choices. Uh, we chose what sounds sounded like the two things that were best, like the two best things to us uh, that ended up once it got to our table and the smells came together is the most god-awful combination of smells that we could possibly think of. Wet shoe. And that is the fried fish sandwich as well as the uh, the dragon platter, which is a combination of their sweet and sour chicken and their beef and broccoli. So it's time to get eaten and I think Rhino is probably itching to get started on that Chinese food. So I'm going to let him dig in first. Okay, so the dragon platter is the sweet and sour and beef and broccoli. So it's $15.49. Um, you get a, if you've ever been to uh, Panda Express, it's like that. You get the two things. You get a side here. There's some fried rice. What I'm assuming is a spring roll or an egg roll here, and some vegetables on Lord knows what this sauce is underneath here. So it looks a little mushy. I'm gonna go in for the fried rice first. Here. Okay, it's not terrible. It's actually pretty, pretty good. Like. I'm also starving, so take this all with a grain of salt, but um, the rice is flavorful, so. Mm. I don't know which one this is, a spring roll or an egg roll? That's an egg roll. Okay, I'm gonna add some sauce to that. That's fine, Let me. I'm gonna get bites of everything here and you guys get to watch. Oh, they're like chicken fingers. I thought they were gonna be like the little pieces. <laughs> I was surprised this was one thing. No, those look like chicken tenders with sauce on them. Sure do. <laughs> sure do. I guess that's how sure they can do, have sure such, a, such a divided menu. I don't hate this because um, it reminds me of... Um, I, I don't know, we called them chicken fingers at the Chinese food places in well, I'm from in Massachusetts, and those are like, the, you know, the brown on the outside, chicken on the inside, you dip them in the sauce, sweet and sour chicken, I don't know. It's called somewhere else everywhere hmm. I go. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but it sounded like you made a fun song out of it, at least. I almost had hand movements, too. A little Shirley Temple I could make. I mean, the beef and broccoli's fine, too. It's got like a sweet flavor, but um, I, I do feel like this broccoli is maybe like, I don't like the look of it. Oh, I did not like the sound of this either. Okay, so my first initial impression after being starving is that this actually isn't terrible. It's, I don't really think it, of this as Chinese food. This is the most American of Chinese food I've ever had. Why don't you have some of this and tell me what you think? I don't know where to start. I'm going to start with the, the sweet and sour because I don't usually like sweet and sour. So it's, it, what I like is it's not it's not like a, a ton of sweet and sour sauce on it. You know sometimes they'll put like way too much yeah. down there. It's a sweet and sour that I could actually eat. It's not overly sweet and it's not overly sour. So I don't know where that makes it lie at. It's somewhere in the middle. Tip it. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go for the uh, the beef and broccoli. Is there beef in there? Uh, 
I think you have a little bit of beef. There you go. Found it. I don't normally get beef from broccoli. It's not a thing I like. I hate this flavor. Um, I don't know how you didn't notice it right away. The broccoli legitimately 100% tasted like stale cigarettes. Okay, I, okay. Oh, uh, it was. I told you, I don't gross. think the broccoli's good. Yeah, yeah, there's something like it. I didn't taste that. Oh. That oh, is not. Okay. No, that's really, really bad. There's a lot of sodium in it. It's really bad. Stale cigarettes. Good lord, I hope you didn't eat a piece of a cigarette. <laughs> that's what worries me is some guy just yeah, bad. Because I'm like, I didn't taste it, it, but now you're like. <laughs> You're right about the fried rice. It's very non-offensive. There's yeah. not a lot of flavor to it, but it's also not terrible because of that. So it's just, it's right down the middle of the road for me. Not good, not bad. The rest of the vegetables don't have the same taste as the broccoli from the beef and broccoli. So that's a good sign at least. I, th and I, th I think that requires one of the duck sauces or something egg roll yeah the egg roll is a little bland could be kicked up by some uh, spicy mustard so oh. Oh. Um, we'll, uh, we'll set that to the side and well you know maybe... how Chinese food just gets better when it's refrigerated so yeah leave it so there. let's we're gonna sit it to the side for a while and um, do you want me to just start on the fish yeah or... go right ahead okay yeah. I'm gonna pull the fish over I don't like cutting things in half the fish sandwich, I don't remember the price. We'll get there later. Can Ryan buy, took the photo this can time. Can I buy you a fish sandwich? Yeah. It's a lady's Excuse man. me, sweet right. thing. <laughs> yeah, we can take your car, because mine does not exist. <laughs> I would pick you up on a bus, and we would go get a fish sandwich. So a uh, good flaky cod in the middle there. Oh, I, see, I was the, worried that was just going to be a puff of fry. No, no, no. That's a lot of fish in yeah. there, too. So I'm going to take a one bite without any condiments in them. Take a one and a bite, though. It's got no sauce on it, right? Yeah, no sauce whatsoever. I'm eating it just with the, the fixings that it comes with. One sad piece of lettuce and then one tomato. Um really a lot of the flavors coming from the fried fish aspect of it so it does it needs a condiment in my opinion uh, I would have loved a tartar sauce for this there was none to be found not even suggested on the menu so your standard uh, choices were available mustard ketchup mayonnaise malt vinegar Ugh. and <laughs> for fried fish you know you want malt no, vinegar know. and then also no. relish too so yeah I'm gonna decide what I want to put on, and I'll let you get your bite in the meantime. Um, I will say it's still really, really warm, even after we took pictures and talked about the other stuff first. So. Oh yeah, no, it's still, it's still, it's hot. It's probably the temperature you want to eat it at. Hmm. It also tasted better than it looked. Like, like I said, I thought initially it looked like it was just this lump, and I was like, oh, that, that's a fry that bubbled up. Um, but. Um, the uh, coating on this is like it's got some flavor not not super salty I know that can get out of control really quickly when you're frying fish um, but I do agree I, I, I think it's odd that it didn't come with a sauce a specialty sauce or anything like that so my sauce is gonna be mayonnaise um, but all in all not really actually not that bad and I feel like the fact that this is fish all the way through and through just makes it a little bit better we considered taking a break during our meal to stop and give you an update about our thoughts uh, once we added sauces and other sorts of things and we obviously didn't because we cut right to the end here and just a uh, long story short we did that because it just got worse it's garbage just pure garbage oh my god so i took another bite of that um the, the beef and broccoli I don't know how I lucked out on that first bite, but like if you pick it up and smell it, it actually smelled like cigarettes. That might have had like nicotine or something in it. Ugh. I like I I. Ugh, God. Yeah. I yeah. didn't like that. No, 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 no. It was not good, and um, yeah, the rice was just continued to be kind of blandish. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Uh, 
the, the sweet and sour chicken was probably the thing that was best out of everything. Yeah. Because even moving back over to the fish, it, the first bite yeah. was good, was fine. The first bite was fine, but it, like, it, like I added mayonnaise to mine and I was like, oh, it made it worse. And then I added ketchup and I was fine, but it was like, I don't, I'm, an, I'm, I am over 30. I do not want to be eating ketchup on my fish sandwiches. I'm not judging people that are. I'm just saying like, I want, I want to be fancier. Yeah, I just, I have nothing good to say about that. Cause even the stuff that was like, I would, I would say, if you're really in a pinch and someone wants to eat there, you're not going to like, you're not gonna throw up over the chicken sandwich or the sweet and sour chicken. Oh, but the other thing, I, I'm getting yeah. like a little bit of a Ugh. Yeah, I, but yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend eating here just in general. Don't go in at all. So it's, worse than blondies? Uh, that's tough, that's tough. Um, I mean, blondies is just uh, a sandwich, I guess, so. Yeah, I feel like Blondie's was bad, but for different reasons. This was like, the things that were edible were just like, okay, they weren't great. They weren't, but they weren't in a, like they weren't completely offensive. But the things that were really bad here were just really, really bad. So I don't really have anything else to say besides that. Bulldozing. Just don't go. Comic Strip Cafe, pure garbage. Yeah. So we're gonna head back to the studio, wrap things up. We'll see you then. Rhino, as always, we just, we know how to pick them, don't we? We sure do. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> I don't know what else to say either, but uh, regardless, I it's, a, it's always a pleasure being at Universal Orlando, no matter what the outcome of the scenario is. So uh, we hope you enjoyed our, our little dining experience that we had over at Universal Orlando. Uh, and besides that, that's going to do it for this week's episode. So, of course, if you have uh, have any need or quest or knowledge for more information, you a can quest. always... <laughs> yes, I don't, I don't know why that came out, but it did. If you have a quest for more knowledge or information on this show or any of the others on the Diz Unplugged podcast network, of course, DizUnplugged.com is your home for that. You can also find links there for our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I think that's it. Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. You can find all that stuff, though. Our email, also there, uopodcast at disunplugged.com. This is the official announcement now that we will be putting out a post on our Facebook page where you can start asking your questions because next week's episode is going to be an email episode. So get ready for that. Uh, obviously, email slash comment. We'll, we'll read them all. So, But do that there. Uh, you know the ways to get us questions. We will read them. You can even leave them down in the comments below. I'll try to note the ones that you did, and we can find them there so we can say them on next week's episode. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I forgot. I don't remember if I said thank you before, but if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead make sure you are subscribed and you're hitting the button for notifications, that bell button, so you can see any new videos that come out with us. And also make sure you are leaving those comments down below and you're hitting that thumbs up button. Makes us feel good about ourselves. Uh, then if you're listening to this on iTunes, make sure you're subscribed, rating, and reviewing us because I know you're still not, but you need to be. So just do it. Just go ahead and do it. So uh, that's it for this episode. Thank you once again to everyone out there for listening and watching. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, Rhino, for being here with me. Uh, but we will see you again next week for another episode of the Disunplugged Universal Edition. But until then, remember, we still have not changed the name.